Are you a hardworking local business owner striving for success online? There is help. Welcome to the Smarter Local Marketing Podcast, featuring candid conversations and inspiring stories of online success. Now, here's your host. Yes, this is James Fortell, and I am your host for the Smarter Local Marketing Podcast. And today, I'll be talking with Jose Quiroz, a local customer acquisition specialist and a partner here at Smarter Local. And we're going to be discussing the five reasons email marketing is the key to winning more local customers. Now, before Jose joins us, just a reminder that if you would love to finally have in place a rock-solid internet marketing strategy for your business that provides you with an excellent ongoing return on investment, go ahead and reply to the email in which you receive this podcast episode to arrange a free 30-minute consultation to discuss how a smarter local marketing program can be custom-tailored to your specific needs and business. Again, simply reply to the email in which you receive this podcast episode to arrange a free, no obligation, 30-minute consultation. Now again, Jose Quiroz is a local marketing specialist and a partner here at Smarter Local. Jose, thanks for joining me again today. Yeah, of course. Always a pleasure, James. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. So now, hey, today, let's talk about today. Let's talk about the five reasons email marketing is the key to winning more local customers. Yeah, definitely. Let's jump right in. So now I've got I've got a list of five items here. Uh, I think we should maybe just take it right from the top. Number one, and this is usually a surprise to many business owners who haven't really thought about this, and then it's kind of a no-brainer once you hear it. But it really makes sense, number one, to have a list of your customers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's one of those things where it's such a no-brainer that you forget about it. That you think, you know what, Mike, that customer is going to come in next week. I'm going to see him tomorrow. But you just never know. Uh, you never know. So you want to capture that information as much as possible and have it organized and ready for use. I know a customer list is, is generally uh, an asset to the business. I know when businesses are sold, one of the things that's uh, on the positive side of the ledger is a customer list. And in the scenario we're talking about today, we're really talking about an email list, an email audience, uh, somebody that you could communicate with on an ongoing basis. And uh, we, in, a, in an earlier episode, you and I talked a little bit about Sawbucks Pub and building out their email list. And classic example, when we walk through the door to give them a hand to bring in more customers uh, into their establishment, they didn't have a list of their best repeat customers. So we quickly remedied that. Plus we got everybody else we could on board onto the list as well, which really gives them a, a, a nice way to now market to them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's, uh, it's definitely an oversight um, with a lot of businesses where you have people who are your advocates, you know, they are, people are familiar with the terms, you know, they are your influencers. And by not capturing that information and then staying engaged with them, even when they're not on premise, um, you're, de you're definitely doing yourself a disservice. And you you made a great point and that's a great perspective on it. If you ever do have an exit strategy with your business, a customer list is important. An email list is, you know, it, it was definitely going to add value to that. I was reading an interesting stat and I don't remember where I, 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 I got it from, I have to admit, but it said 91% of consumers check their email at least once a day on their smartphone. So if you don't have them on a list and you can't mail them, there's no way that you can actually reach out to them. Right, right. And there's still, um, I believe there's still something about the email that is not as intrusive as a SMS, like a text message, um, you know, send off. And it's because, I think because it is that, you have that one wall away where this is an email app. So when I get a notification, I'll check it when I can rather than direct text message. And yeah, consumers, I know for sure I check my email on a daily basis more than, more than once on a daily basis. And that's definitely something that you want to engage with them. And if, and if it's their, your advocate, client or existing customers, they already know you. They already recognize you. This is just a friendly reminder that you're there. I remember back in April, it was April 27th of 2016, I was heading to find myself a coffee and we manage all the social media for social, uh, for Sawbucks pub as well. And all of a sudden my phone started, bzz, bzz, and it's like, what's going on? And I, I, and I, I see this chatter going on about the pub 
And it's early still. So the pub's not open until 11. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And I can't really figure it out, but I could tell something's up. And I turned the corner, headed that, headed that way because they're not too far from us here. Pulled in, and sure enough, the place had had a big fire overnight. Mm, wow. And the owner was there, Rod was there, and the back doors were open, and all the power was out, and he had chairs and stuff were pulling out into the back parking lot, and I walk into the pub, and there's two inches of water. It's black, as black can be inside because of the soot. Didn't burn to the ground, but it was a fire that caused a lot of smoke damage, like massive amounts of smoke damage. And I'm thinking, first thing I have to do is contact the customers and uh, social media number one and email number two. And I'm thinking, and I, and I got to know this over the months because that was a- April 27th. It wasn't till the middle of October until the pub was repaired and back opening the doors. So that's six over just about six months, seven months. Right. So that's a long time. So because we had a list of their customers and an email list and an audience on Facebook, first thing I did was send out a message to everybody and boom, the whole Facebook page just blew, blew up and the email went out to everybody. So everybody was instantly alerted. But that brought them on side with us too. And now they became part of the rebuilding mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. The bringing them back into the pub. So six and a half months later, when we reopened, we still had them. The doors opened up and the place was packed. And it's been very, very, very busy ever since. But I, I have to think, what would have happened if we didn't have a list of all of the clients right. uh, or in this particular ca- uh, context, patrons? And what if we couldn't communicate with them through Facebook? We would have had to say, okay, we're open again. But how would we have done that? Would we have to send a, put a newspaper ad out or... You know, you kind of think of it from that perspective, and it's like, it's a very good idea to have a list of your customers. Yeah, definitely. And then, or you have them coming to the location, and it's burned down, and now they're thinking, what happened? Did it close down? Is this business no longer around? They're very in the in the lost or new customers coming in. So with that, those two channels of Facebook and, and email, now you're able to, again, communicate that well. It's almost like, you know, a, a press release, a very PR thing to do. Say, hey, let me notify the audience, um, get them engaged. And then not only that, but like you said, in, in the six and seven months of the rebuild, now they're almost becoming supporters of you they're they're hoping for your reopening to happen because you know they they know the hardship of it and and they're and they're seeking there for you they were and we actually we had, we had some fun with it because we would every couple of weeks we would take a bunch of pictures from the inside and when it got time to choosing new carpets and we'd say which one do you like best and we did this on social media but just uh, the, the whole concept of just having a list of your customers is became so apparent there how how important that is yeah, you can definitely have fun with them. I mean, you can do some before and after pictures, before and after video, and yeah, either put it on social media and put it through email. And yeah, really just make make your customers now a part of the story. Okay, so let's move on to number two. So number one was it makes sense to have a list of your customers. Number two, you can get immediate results. And I know you and I touched upon this slightly in another episode, but let, let's dig into this because this is important. This gives you the ability to promote a special offer, maybe you're slow one evening, maybe you've got an event coming up. If you don't have a list of your customers, how in the world are you going to market to them? Right. How are you going to gauge that? I mentioned the uh, local brewery in a previous episode, how you know they use their VIP email club to notify of new beers, et cetera. But another thing that they do is they gauge pre-sales based on on that. So that's immediate results. That's telling them, okay, we're bringing out this seasonal beer. Let's shoot it out there through our email campaign. Uh, let's do a quick maybe survey of would you buy or would you not or put a pre-order in, save, you know, pre-order $5 now and then you get, you know, a pint off or whatever the case may be. But that's immediate results for them knowing, okay, our trajectory for sales is this much. We, we can hit this much based on the pre-sales that we just emailed out. I know uh, Victor uh, Terrazaz from Rejuvenate Therapeutic Massage, he, he kind of summed it up best. He goes, emails are a prime mode of communication. We rely heavily on it because whenever I send something out, I get a flood of phone calls. Right. And right. that's true. That's very true. 
It's very, very true. And like we said, people are consistently taking them on a daily basis, multiple times. Um, you know, this is an example from a major retailer. Uh, so I do marketing consulting for a major uh, shoe retailer, uh, local and, um, well, they're nationwide in, in the United States. And whenever there is a big sneaker released from a brand like Nike or Jordan, they send an email out exactly at that time that the sneaker releases it's typically always 7 a.m on a saturday and you know their audience is is uh trained to that they know that that's that's the industry standard so now instead of the audience uh or the consumer having to go on the website track the shoe down and kind of you know do three clicks or four clicks to get there now they're getting an email directly and say hey this just released click here to buy and it takes them directly to the product page and we see that weekly on, on a consistent basis those open rates and those click throughs are dramatically high during those times because it's that immediate result it's that immediate action they can take then to to buy the sneaker that they want yeah yeah number three they want to hear from you. That's uh, another misnomer with some business owners. They think they're bugging or they're, they're, they're going to come across as pushy or do they really want to hear from us? And I know we, we shared some stats uh, in another episode that were from Marketing Sherpa who said 61% of consumers enjoy, actually enjoy receiving promotional emails weekly and 38% would like emails to come even more frequently. And I know that's a surprise to many. But if you think about it, it makes sense because, again, these are your best customers. These are people who have given you permission to email you or to email them. So they want to hear from you. Uh, what's your What's been your experience in that? Oh, definitely. 100%. I mean, um, I, I mentioned it in the previous episode where I was doing some consulting for the local chamber of commerce. And the local chamber of commerce here in my town, they're really trying to get into the new age, into the digital, um, whether it's podcast, video, et cetera, but really communicate uh, the local news, the local community business news to business owners in a new in a new modern way instead of the traditional route. And that was one of the concepts of, you know, if you do a day, a weekly video update, you know, hey, this week in Tracy, hey, this week in the chamber of commerce, whether it's audio or um, or video people are going to want to consume that they're going to want they're going to stay alert to if you train them hey every thursday at 7 p.m you're going to get your your weekly update on your local community uh they're, they'll stay open to that and engage with that and you could even take it to the next level of having a specific subscriber list just for that and now that's that's like a different audience that you can target differently that you can market differently but the business owner, for example, with the Chamber of Commerce, they have information that the the, the customer, this in this instance, is, is the business owner, that they want, right? They want to know what's going on with the city. They want to know what the new regulations are, if the new Whole Foods is going to open up or not, did that get passed or not? So they want that information, and now you're, you have a channel to, to communicate that. I know in, a, in another edition, you and I shared three what we called surprisingly easy to implement strategies to quickly grow your email audience from zero to a thousand. So if listeners are wondering, well, how am I going to actually build out a list and is it going to take me forever? The answer is no. And I would encourage you to go look up that episode. And again, it's called uh, three surprisingly easy to implement strategies to quickly grow your email audience from zero to a thousand. The other thing, just to kind of wrap up on they want to hear from you, which is point number three, I know in the case of Sawbucks, it's a pub that I visit and I hang out there. It's my personal little pub. And quite often, somebody will come up to me and they'll say, are you the one who sends the email updates? And I say, yes. And then they just go on to tell me how much they appreciate being kept in touch and being let know what's going on and what band's coming up, what dinner specials are booked for the week, and just all of the things that we do to keep them up to date and how much... And it always, it's, it always a little bit surprises even me and I'm in the business, like how much they actually really appreciate the updates. Especially, yeah, especially a business like a pub. I mean, people, it's like you, you said, this is my own personal little pub. You know, it's people's kind of second home. So they definitely want to keep that updated and what's going on and, and, and stay in tune with that business. I know uh, in another episode, I had a chance to talk with Roy Weissman and he shared an affordable email, I guess, software solution for local businesses that makes it really easy to create and send emails that uh, really do turn customers into repeat customers, which I think is a goal for a lot of business owners. It's one thing to bring them through the door once. It's a whole other thing to keep them coming back. And of course, email really helps that 
But the interesting thing about what Roy shared in that episode, and I encourage listeners, if you're wondering how am I exactly technically am I going to email them and how complicated is it going to be? The answer is it's not complicated at all. And how much does it cost? Well, the software that Roy shared is top-level software. It's, it's industry standard plus some, I would say. And the beautiful thing about it is it's free. And I don't mean free with a gotcha. I mean, it's 100% free for up to your first 2,500 subscribers, which for many local businesses, 2,500 email subscribers from your local customers can change your business life because now you can communicate with them and keep them coming back over and over again. But it's free for up to 2,500 subscribers in your database or in their database. So it's all secured to you. You're the only one that gets to see it. But you can also send out up to 15,000 emails per month, which is plenty. And it absolutely costs nothing. So if you happen to be wondering how exactly are we going to manage this, definitely check out that episode. And again, it's called uh, An Affordable Email Marketing Solution that makes it easy to create and send emails that turn customers into repeat customers. And you'll find that uh, on the list uh, of podcasts on the site as well. Yeah, and you're covering uh, point number four in this five reasons email marketing is the key to winning local customers is number four is that it's cost effective. I mean, you're doing yourself a disservice by not, I mean, that specific software, it's free. You can't be free, <laughs> especially to engage with your customers and, and see a great ROI. I mean, your investment is zero dollars. Absolutely. And I, you know what I was thinking is like, okay, so let's say I have a thousand customers who come through my door. So you manage to collect together a list of their phone numbers. And their email addresses. Now, if you were to have to phone a thousand people and you paid somebody to do that, you're going to pay at least a dollar a call. So that's a thousand bucks. However, to send a thousand emails to that same audience costs you nothing. Right. That's a great way to put it. I know I read a stat from the Direct Marketing Association. They said email marketing. And they say it's still by far the most effective marketing strategy of all the things that we can do on the internet these days. It's still by far number one. And 91% of people check their emails on their smartphones at least once a day. But they say, according to the Direct Marketing Association, email marketing yields an estimated 4,300% return on investment. Wow. Yeah, that's that's, that's it a is. huge it number. It really is. And I, that number's been pretty steady for as long as I can remember. And every every year I check it out, and it's still there. Right. And the reason is because typically when you're getting someone's email, they're giving it to you. There's an opt-in opportunity. There's something where they're handing it over on purpose. So that's telling you, hey, I want to hear from you. I'm interested enough. Here's my email. Please give Keep in contact. I remember, I remember reading a book way back, and this would have been probably 2001, somewhere in that, somewhere in that era. And there was a book out there called Permission Marketing. And this was what the, the whole new big thing about the internet is people were going to give you permission to market to them. Cause up until that point, it really didn't exist. If you wanted to market to somebody, it was through newspaper or radio or television for those who are big enough or coupons or flyers, something like that. But there was really no way for somebody to say, hey, I want you to communicate with me directly and tell me what's going on at the business. And it was when I read that book, it was saying it was it was it was an eye opener because they're right. It's it's they and you mentioned it. They give you permission to say, hey, here's what's going on this week or we have an event coming up or we've got a special offer for you. And as the stats say, 138% of people who receive email offers uh, or people who receive email offers spend 138% more than people who don't. So absolutely, it, it should be something that's really highly uh, sought after for business owners who do not yet have an email list. Okay, so number five is having an email list gives you the ability to nurture relationships because let's face it not everybody who joins your email list is ready to come back tomorrow or next week but maybe next month six months next year it gives you the ability to keep them in touch and coming back would that be a fair statement definitely i'll give you a personal example 
just this past week, I went to, um, you know, I, I like to work out, stay in shape. And I noticed that mobility was a, was a weak point in my fitness, right? I, I commute a lot, sit at a desk a lot. My flexibility has gone down. So I look nearby for a gym that focused in mobility. So I go and I have a, a class with a mobility expert. He shows me a couple of things. My shoulder's feeling much better. My neck is feeling much better. And obviously it, it's a consultation. So at the end, he said, okay, this is the price. This is this much. Now I wasn't, I wasn't ready to purchase at the moment, but after that, he would still keep in contact through an email list of like, Hey, this is the latest trend in mobility or check out this workout for the shoulder, you know, workouts that we did. This is a different variation, et cetera. And now it's really convincing me to say, you know what? This this gym, gym knows what they're doing. They're really experts in mobility. I'm willing to buy pretty soon here. And that's because they stayed nurturing that relationship and communicating with me um, and really providing more value even after the consultation. Yeah, I think that's just respectful of them to you and to anybody who's on a good email list where a business is not pitching all the time. We're not saying like you need to be sell, sell, sell. But when they're sharing good information like you just mentioned there, you know, relevant content going out to your audience – throughout the year so that you're staying top of mind or they're staying top of mind. So when they are ready, you are absolutely the first person that they think of because of the emails, the thoughtful emails that have been going out that shows that not only are you providing good information, but you actually are demonstrating that, hey, we want your business and people appreciate that. Right, right. Yeah. You're showing respect for their their information, really. I know in a, in another episode, uh, we talk about the 12 emails that every business should build into an automated email sequence that goes out over the period of a year to nurture an email audience, to keep them in the loop, keep them coming back, keep them happy, and to genuinely show that you appreciate them and that you would appreciate their business as well. So one one other stat before we wrap this up, and I'll get your final thoughts in just a sec, but I, I remember interviewing Ryan Alice. At the time he was 27, he was just about to sell his company called iContact, which is a large email uh, software service provider. And at the ripe old age of 27, he sold it for $157 million. So he's in the email business for years. And he had learned by watching literally billions of potential subscribers to all of his customers' websites. He had 100,000 different businesses owning his software. He had learned that 70% of the visitors that come to your website, and think about this if you happen to have a website for those who are joining us today, that he learned that 70% of the people that visit your website will never return again, ever, unless you get them to subscribe to your email newsletter. And if you think about that, if you've got a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand people visiting your website, say in a month, 70% of them, you're never going to see them again if you don't get them on your list. So it's just so critical and such another good reason to, uh, to get them on your list. So a- any final thoughts, Jose, uh, that you'd like to share before we wrap this up? I mean, I would really pretty much say that this was the five reasons. The number one reason was it just makes sense. And I think that's just what you have to take away from it. You know, it makes sense to have this. So again, you're doing your business a disservice by not taking advantage of, of this communication that's at your fingertips. Absolutely. And very well said. So, so there you have it. Five reasons. Email marketing is the key to winning more local customers. Uh, I can see we are out of time. Jose, I want to thank you again so much for joining us and uh, sharing uh, your thoughtful insight into the area of email marketing. It's always a pleasure, James. Now to our listeners, if what we talked about here today makes sense to you, but you're not quite sure how to get started, simply reply to the email in which you receive this podcast episode to arrange your free, no obligation, 30-minute consultation. Uh, We'd love to help you bring more clients and customers through your door. Again, simply reply to the email in which you receive this podcast episode to arrange your free, no obligation, 30-minute consultation. And finally, if you enjoyed this episode and you know a friend or an associate who would benefit from what we shared here today, please do pass this episode on to them. I'm sure they'll thank you for it. Jose, thanks again. And to our listeners, thanks for listening to another edition of the Smarter Local Marketing Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Smarter Local Marketing Podcast. 
If you would love to finally have in place a rock-solid internet marketing strategy that provides you with an excellent ongoing return on investment, then go ahead and reply to the email in which you receive this podcast episode to arrange a free, no-obligation, 30-minute consultation to discuss how a smarter local marketing program can be tailored to your specific needs and business. Again, simply reply to the email in which you receive this podcast episode to arrange your free, no-obligation, 30-minute consultation. Just a stroll without a care Cause I'm going down the road to a brand new place And I'll get there with a smile on my face